uh, for the sake of other parents that may or may not have been able to get on tonight. And we know there's some connectivity issues around the county this evening. I hope you're all staying safe. It's kind of a scary, eerie feeling outside with the winds uh, and the, um, all of the smoke. So uh, I know tonight may not have been the best night uh, to do this, but uh, we will uh, be recording this. Uh, we will also do another uh, parent town hall meeting in a couple of weeks from now, once we have a week or so under our belt of education. I want to uh, introduce those that are here uh, on behalf of the district. Uh, we have myself, Kurt Shelley, superintendent. We have Jennifer Garcello, who is our communication specialist. We have Kara Rhodes, who is in charge of our virtual. She's a director, director of our virtual instruction. And we have Katie Moore that does curriculum instruction and assessment for us. One thing that would be nice uh, as we get started here, there is a chat feature at the bottom. If you touch the bottom of your screen, there's a little chat feature. If you could be so kind uh, to enter your name and what grade level of um, students you have so that we have an idea of who our audience is and so we have an idea of who to reach out to uh, and be specific towards school. So if you could put your name in that chat in the grade level of your, or grade levels of your students, that would be very helpful. So uh, just to get started, uh, I wanna let you know that um, early August, uh, we released a statement that Tillamook School District would be comprehensive distance learning. Uh, that was a sad day for me because I really wanted to be in person with students. Our staff wanted to see students, and it's critical that we worry about the social emotional aspect of our families and our students. When making that decision and recommending to the board, I felt like it was the only way that we could have a consistent school for the first trimester where we didn't go in and out of in-person and out of person based on uh, a virus that would control or dictate what might happen. So that gives us uh, a better idea and it allowed us uh, over five weeks for parents to plan, put together childcare, put together pods, put together things that they thought would be uh, really important. And it gave us uh, five weeks to work the kinks out. We postponed school to start September 14th so we could work out any kinks uh, that have uh, risen and uh, we do have some kinks. So. Uh, I'll get into some of this stuff uh, as we get going. At this time, um, I wanna let you know that our goal is to be as consistent as we possibly can. Uh, our objective is to be better this fall, uh, and not just better, but really good at delivering instruction, building relationships, uh, having it be relevant and having rigor in it, uh, and be consistent pre-K uh, 12, and satisfy the equity needs that uh, might arise. Also wanna let you know uh, here today, we also have uh, Anel and Steph who are translating for us and uh, are here if we need that feature. So uh, if you log on into Spanish, you'll hear them. We'll hear uh, the English. This time I'll turn it over to Jennifer to uh, talk about things that she's working. Welcome everyone, I'm Jennifer Garcello. I'm the communications director for the school district. And so um, lots of different kinds of communications are falling to my hat this year. Um, first and foremost, it's important to me to make sure that we're being clear with all of you and communicating as appropriate. And so um, I'm the one that's doing all the Facebook posts. Um, we get a lot of messages through Facebook. I answer those regularly. Um, if we feel that it's something that we wanna make sure all parents get, we will send it via email. Um, and then beyond that, I'm also working on the connectivity with some of our students. We have about 75 students in the district who don't currently have internet in their homes. And so I'm working with Kurt and the County Board of Commissioners to work on getting them access. So um, you may some, see some things from me on that. Um, and then I'm also admitting people, so <clears throat> multitasking here. Uh, and then the, the other piece that I'm working on is meals. And Kurt will speak to this later, but we will begin delivering meals next Monday. They will be free for all. Um, so we're super excited about that. And they'll be for all kids in our community, 18 and under. So um, we're really excited to be able to do that again. So with that, I will hand it over to Katie Moore, who's our curriculum director. Thank you. So I would just start by saying that our, our staff and teachers have been working really hard the past 
few days uh, participating in a wide range of professional development as we get Canvas up and going. And so Canvas is going to be the consistent tool that we use to connect with students and families and to integrate that with our uh, curriculum across the system. But we wanted to make sure that we had something that was consistent for families. So that's something that we'll be providing some additional supports. And I think there's some questions that have been submitted and we'll talk more about Canvas. Um, but we do have district adopted curriculum that we're working to figure out a way that we can get those plugged in and really utilize um, all of the resources that we have available for students. And with that, I will pass it to Kara. All right, I'm Kara Rhodes, the Director of Virtual Instruction. And as um, the original plan for me was to have our online option so students would be in person, whether hybrid or 100% back in the building. And I was going to offer a second option and that was gonna be 100% online. So as we shifted to um, comprehensive distance learning, which meant that everyone shifted to completely online, my role has shifted just a little bit. Um, but the plan will be when students go back December 7th, the hope will be um, that students will be back in the building and then we will still maintain an online option for our students. And so we're still working out the details on kind of what that will look like, um, but we, it, it will be possible for students and families that are not comfortable with in-person learning to still remain online. And I'll pass it to Kurt to begin answering some other questions. Okay, so we have some pre-submitted questions that we're gonna answer first. There's about 15 of them. We will split them up amongst the four of us. And then uh, we will also allow you to ask some questions, to unmute and ask questions. If you wanna ask questions, go ahead and put them in the chat as well. Those of us not answering questions will attempt to uh, get prepared to answer those for you. So uh, we'll start out, Katie's gonna take question one. All right, so question one has three different components to it, so we'll break it up. Uh, the first one is how will the Canvas app work as far as kids accessing their assignments? So Kara is gonna have some parent um, trainings coming up in the next few days. If you haven't seen the flyers for that, we can make sure to get those out to you and she'll have some demos specific to the, the Canvas app. The short version though, is that they'd be able to access all of their courses just like they would on their Chromebook. They can see notifications from their teachers, uh, submit assignments, um, send messages. So it's got a lot of the same capabilities as a, as a desktop would. Second part to this question is what day will classwork be available and when will work need to be completed by? So across the district, we are gonna run a Friday to Friday school week, essentially. So new content will be uh, published on Canvas each Friday at 4 p.m. and students will have until the following Friday at 3 p.m. to submit their assignments. Our intent here is to provide flexibility for families. And so you'll have opportunities to kind of um, organize your, your students learning throughout the week as it fits best for your family. Uh, what will the teacher lead lessons be on? That is going to be um, determined at the building level and each grade level, you know, depending on the data that they get back and seeing where students are. Um, we have, you know, really taken on the responsibility that we need to be flexible. We need to be responsive to what families and students need. And the last part is when will, will the lessons be video so students can watch them at any time? Um, I would say the, the vast majority of them would be video-based instruction, and we've asked all teachers to record their videos so that families can access them at, at any time. Thanks, Katie. Appreciate that. Uh, I'm going to jump in and take the next three or four questions. Uh, what happens if a Chromebook uh, we were given stops working, and are we responsible to get this fixed? No, we're gonna offer tech support uh, to you. You'll need to contact, uh, go through the chain of getting hold of your school first, perhaps your teacher, and then on to your principal. The principal then will forward that on uh, to the district office, to our tech uh, uh, office. Kara Rhodes will be involved in that a little bit as well. So we'll try to help you out as fast as we can. Um, but understand we have three people that work in tech and we have 2,200 students. And so uh, sometimes it's gonna be difficult to get that turned around in just uh, an hour or two. It may take us uh, 24 hours or so to get that turned around. We will ask that uh, 
and we won't be able to drive to you to you to get them. Uh, we'll have to try to get them picked up. Uh, and there's some options that we have. One way to get them picked up is uh, routes on the bus. You can give them to an EA there. They can pick it up if you can drive. Uh, we could come and get them depending on where you're at. You could drop them off at the school. And so those would be all those type of options. Um, next question, uh, how will bus lunches work this year? Will the buses run the same schedule as, as they did last year? And is there a plan uh, to feed all of our children? We got a, a state waiver, a federal waiver that we have applied for from the state. All of our students will be fed. So we'll be able to hand out meals similar to what we did last year. Bus schedules will be uh, similar. We will start at approximately 11 a.m. Uh, from the high school. We're um, using two kitchens this year to be more efficient, the junior high and the high school. Buses will be loaded at the high school. There will be a driver and an instructional assistant on each bus. It's really important that when we're picking up food, the social distancing, wearing masks, all those things, if we can help teach our students to do that. If, if you're in charge of a family or a childcare or a pod, uh, it'd be really nice. And they're gonna be excited to see each other at the bus stops and they're gonna wanna hug and they're gonna wanna do all those things. And uh, we shouldn't wanna ruin that. We want them to see their drivers and see the EAs, but we'll get you breakfast and lunches uh, each day. Um, we hope somewhere between 11 and 1, our buses end up back at each respective school uh, for people to pick up there. You can also do walk-up lunches at the high school, depending on what your proximity is to the high school if you're in town. We may do walk-up lunches at the junior high, but I don't want that uh, to be a guarantee at this point in time. We may not do that at the state high school. Our next question uh, is, how do you see this year playing out as far as coming back uh, in-person school? So, We'll, we'll, we'll consistently monitor the metric that's set forth by the state of Oregon and Oregon Health Authority. And in that metric, we have to look at um, the, the county metric, which is you know, how many cases are there, how many have been tested, uh, how, uh, how many per 100,000. So we'll watch that. Uh, we need to be below 5% as a state. Uh, we need to look at that point in time over a period of time and a period of data, not just one week, but over a several week period. Are we safe? What's our trends looking like? And our goal of a second trimester, that would be when in-person learning would be. Uh, I'm pretty sure that some families will not feel comfortable doing that. That's why we've hired Kara Rhodes as our director of virtual instruction. So those families that don't feel comfortable yet coming back to in-person have a virtual opportunity. Um, so, um, is there a plan? Uh, let's see here. Oh, uh, this is the second part of the question. What's the uh, most important? Um, to, what's most important to accomplish this year? Man, I could go on all night on what's most important, uh, and I can't tell you that there's one thing. But uh, social emotional uh, is really important. Our kids are missing out. We need to give them access and opportunity to learning, to rigor, to relevance, um, to make sure that our dual language kids, our EL kids. Our special ed students, kids on a 504, new students to our district feel welcome. But we also need to move the dial academically so that our kids are um, making sure, so that we're making sure that our students are put in a position to be successful as they move up uh, grade level and uh, as they move up and out of our school system, whether that be work, college, uh, armed forces, whatever it might be. So uh, we've, we've got to move the dial a little bit this year and by you know, last year, there's some things that were out of our control. Still some things are out of our control, but we have more things in control this year, such as grading, time devoted uh, to classes, accountability, uh, attendance, and the list goes on and on. So there's a wide gamut of things that we're really looking at uh, making important. Um, but those are the, those are the majors. Um, how do we keep students motivated uh, in the morale high during this challenging season? Man, same thing with parents, same things with staff, things, same things with administrator. I mean, this is a, a real bummer. Uh, I often make uh, note that I missed Pandemic 101 in college. I didn't take any admin or teaching classes around the pandemic. And so giving students uh, access, uh, you know, athletically to be involved in some groups, still having some clubs available, bringing students in as they, if, so that they don't feel like they're literally drowning in homework. Um, helping them as they need help. I think some of the community members have done a great job launching pods. Hats off to you that have done that. Uh, it would be our hope that 
as soon as we can get them back, we get them back. As soon as we can start doing chess clubs and um, all the uh, activities, we'd sure like to start doing that because we know that keeps some students engaged. And so we wanna get those activities, after school programs, um, all those things going. Uh, next question uh, here talked about the school district receiving a grant to help people that don't have current internet. So the county received a grant of nearly $360,000. There are some public and private donors as well uh, of another couple hundred thousand dollars so that we can work on connectivity to students uh, that one, don't have it, or two, can't afford it. And so we're working with Spectrum to get the low hanging fruit as soon as we can. We're working with another gentleman in town, Eric Lesser, who's putting up um, Wi-Fi uh, 150 foot towers starting in South County um, uh, around Mount Hebo, Sand Lake, um, at Nesteca School District and moving north all the way up through Tillamook School District and then on to the Neocani School District. And we're looking at uh, buying routers uh, for families, uh, looking at paying for monthly um, um, bills uh, as far as affordability to help them, but allowing them, if they wanna buy the routers and be able to use it for more than just education, that they buy the routers and pay for their own bills as well. So. We're working with that. Now, this isn't going to happen overnight. We're not going to have connectivity up the Wilson, uh, up the Trask, up Fawcett Creek, uh, clear out Neat Arts and Oceanside, uh, Miami Foley uh, on the 14th to start school. So we'll bring some kids in and allow those kids to start uh, some in-person learning uh, as needed. But uh, one thing that I am also excited about is the ham radios will be able to be utilized with these as well. So it'll help the whole county around um, a safety plan and being able to communicate if we have things where cell phones were to go out, whether or not that be a tsunami, um, an earthquake, fires, gives us that connectivity with a ham radio. So excited about that also. I'm gonna turn the next question over to Jennifer. So the question is, how will daily attendance be handled? And what will the schedule of the teachers look like as far as Zoom calls and communication? So first step, attendance is, is pretty big and broad as is defined by the Department of Ed. So essentially, if the kids participate in any class activity and or interact with their licensed teacher, they're considered present. So that can be by jumping on one of the Zoom calls that the teacher holds. It can be completing an assignment and submitting it. Um, it can be a text through Remind, which is the uh, app that we utilize here in the district. Remind had a soft start last year. We're really working on getting it up and going and thinking this year it's looking a lot cleaner and so that will be a method of communication between teachers and students and families that we will utilize in addition to Canvas. Um, it can be a phone call. It could also be <clears throat> um, doing something within Canvas. And so we have a lot of different ways. Our secretaries are gonna be the first stop and do some checking. And then our teachers will jump in and see if assignments have been completed. And then from there, we'll actually have staff calling. It's actually a pretty broad school day. It's actually a 24 hour school day. So we haven't decided on the finite times, whether it's 11 a.m. to 11 p.m or 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., but, but ultimately we have 24 hours to count that kiddo present, so we've, we've got some leeway in there. As far as what will the schedule of the teachers look like as far as Zoom calls and communications go, the teachers will, and one thing I should add about attendance, the easiest way that we think will be for parents is actually on the kids' Canvas dashboard. They actually will be able to click attendance and they'll, be, they'll have a survey pop up based on their age level and they'll able actually be able to actually click present for their class that day. We think that's probably the easiest and, and maybe a good return or a good routine for our kids to get into. At the high school, they actually have to be present for each class period of the day. Um, on Mondays, we're asking that the kids check in for all classes. Again, if they log in on to Canvas and they take that survey, they can complete all of that within one survey. They're not going to have to complete multiple surveys. Um, on Tuesday and Thursday, the kids at the high school will report for periods one through three, and then on <clears throat> Wednesday, Friday, they'll go for four through six. Um, that helps clean it up a little bit for them, but we think that the survey will probably be the quickest and easiest for parents. 
Now go going back to that, what will Zoom calls look like? At the elementary level, <clears throat> our teachers are going to be logging onto Zoom calls twice each day. <clears throat> Excuse me, we've asked that those are, sim the, those are the same calls so that a kiddo isn't expected to log on twice a day. We're just asking for multiple opportunities from our teachers. And so with that, um, the kids can log on on the morning call or the afternoon call. They're not mandatory. They will be recorded. And so again, going back to that flexibility for our families in, in accessing their education when it works for them. Um, but we do feel it will be a great opportunity. We highly recommend it. It's a great way for the kids to interact with their peers within their class. Um, so we're hoping that will be the case. <clears throat> At the secondary level, our teachers will have regular office hours. And so students will be able to, what essentially we think that will look like is opening a Zoom call. Students will be able to log on and ask questions of their teachers live. They can do that at other times of the day, one-on-one, -on -one, for the student or parent request. Um, but those will be common hours. And those have been set up by each of the schools. So those will be provided to you as well when you get all of your login and password information. And I think the next person is, looks like, Kara. So that was a perfect segue because you talked about students receiving all of their login information. So the question is, when will there be student parent trainings on how to use a Celis in Canvas? Um, the, the first and easiest way is that schools are going to reach out to families. So specifically K six, there are orientations already planned. I'm sure most of you, if you have, a, have an elementary student, you've, you've been contacted by their teacher. And on during that orientation, whether it's virtual or in person, they're going to cover everything that you need to know in terms of how students are going to log into Canvas and give you as much information as you need to be able to feel prepared for day one. At the secondary level, it's definitely coming from those schools as well. They're reaching out and sending information to all of their families. In addition to that, there are, we mentioned at the beginning of this, that there will also be some parent webinars that are available that's gonna cover similar information to this, but is also gonna walk you through what is it gonna look like for my students? What is my student's Canvas account? going to look like and it's not going to be specifically tailored to your kid but it's going to give you an idea of how how are things going to look and how do i navigate once i my student actually gets into canvas so um and there and i'll again this starts tomorrow there's one at noon and they're going to be once a week for the rest of september we'll kind of see what are the needs at that point. My thought is that things will start to shift and it's almost like a series of webinars. So as each month progresses and we have different needs and different things that surface that we will just adjust those meetings to where if you came in September, the October ones might be a whole different subject area. But um, the idea is to just provide lots of platforms and lots of opportunities for parents and families to feel comfortable with this kind of new way of doing school. And so the buildings will certainly give you a lot of information, probably enough to get you going on day one, um, but some of the more like nitty gritty, maybe getting in to see how it might look. Um, if you need a copy of that flyer, just send me an email and I'll put a note in the chat and I'll email it to you. Um, but we'd love to have you join us. It's just more of getting real specific into kind of what it might look like on a student level. And then I think Zoom calls, optional or mandatory, is Katie. Yeah, and uh, Jennifer kind of already touched on this. A couple things that I would clarify is uh, across the district, we've asked all teachers to use Google Meet uh, for their, their live class meetings. We have that integrated within Canvas so that students will be able to log into Canvas and find any of the links that they need to join their teacher and their classmates. Uh, those meetings uh, will take place the same time every week if it's a whole class. Um, teachers do have the, the flexibility and autonomy to, to reach out to families and maybe schedule some one-on-one -on -one support or small groups at additional times, but it would be at the, the family's um, acceptance and working around the, the family schedule. But for the whole group ones, those would be the same time each week. 
Tiffany asked a really good question, and since it piggybacks on what I was talking about, where will the Zoom links be for those parent webinars? So when you click on the link to sign up, there's a little form that you fill out. When you click on that, it sends me, it asks you to put in your email address. And so any parent that signed up for tomorrow's webinar got an email this evening that gave them the link, the web, um, the Zoom uh, link, excuse me, the, to be able to log in tomorrow. And so once you sign up, then that will be sent to you the day before you um, attend. And the schedule of those meetings, again, I'll, Tiffany, I will send you um, a link to, or I'll send you the flyer so you can see when those are. Um, one of the questions was that I've been hired as director of virtual learning. I spoke a little bit about how um, I think my role is just going to be as fluid and as flexible as school is this year. Um, my, I'm really looking forward to having that online option for students and families, and I think that's going to be incredibly important when our students go back to school to make sure that families have the flexibility and they have options for um, what they feel like is necessary for their students. I will drop my contact information into the chat and my role in the um, in comprehensive distance learning is really just to be supportive to our teachers, to the district, to our families, to our students, whatever it is that surfaces. Um, if I don't have the answer, I will find somebody that does. And so um, I'm a nice liaison between people, but I also can answer some of your questions too. So um, if you don't know who to ask or where to go for information, feel free to, to contact me and we will make sure that, that you get whatever it is that you're needing. So um, yeah, I, I look forward to working with all of you and your students and other parents as well. So I'm gonna drop my information in the chat. The next question is, what will a typical day look like as far as a time commitment for students and parents? So one of the considerations is that Friday to Friday schedule. And we've asked teachers that when they're planning content, lessons, assignments, to keep that in mind, that we're looking at what is a, a week's worth. So that provides families the flexibility to kind of structure their individual days um, as they need to. Each building um, and your uh, students, teachers will be sending out sample schedules that can help kind of set up some routines and for families. But again, we wanted to be responsive and flexible. So if you have a student at home and Wednesday is just not a great day, you don't have to fight that battle and you can say, we can pick this up tomorrow. And so we wanted to, to be flexible there. Students um, can work at their own pace with that deadline of Friday is when assignments would be due and additional questions. Teachers are available during those office hours and they will uh, respond to any questions within 24 hours or like the next business day, so to speak. And you can always contact them via Canvas. Thanks, Katie. Want to back up just a little bit. I didn't answer the second part of a question around connectivity. If you need help with connectivity, please email any of us, Jennifer, Kara, Katie, myself, uh, teachers at school, principals at the school, counselors, and say we're struggling with connectivity. So we think we have um, that filled out and we've delivered that to our county commissioners who's working with Spectrum. But um, if we missed you or you didn't get to help, uh, we wanna help you with that. So let's move on. Uh, Acel's curriculum has a reputation for being outdated and out of touch with diverse populations. How much of an option will families have to not participate in the programming and how much autonomy will teachers have to choose to using the programming? So we've shifted a little bit. As we learn more, our conclusions change. Uh, we still feel there's some uh, validity to utilizing Acelis. Uh, our teachers will use current curriculum adopted by the district uh, at least 75% of the time, and Acellus could be utilized up to 25% of the time. And so that is an option that, uh, that teachers will have and have the autonomy to do that. Um, adding on to that question is how much um, ability do parents have in helping make some of those determinations with their own children? So, you know, we believe that 
uh, as we look at a cellist, I didn't see anything around a cellist that was racist. I didn't see anything that I thought was sexist. I did think that uh, during these times um, that I'd like to see them have done a little bit nicer job being inclusive of more voices, inclusive of authors perhaps of color, female authors, a more diverse view. Um, but I would say that we might be able to um, bring up that point with uh, a lot of the curriculum that is utilized, not just in our district, but in a number of different places. So I think it's always important that we keep that in mind. Um, so what we decided to do was we listened to our teachers that said, hey, we have some concerns with this and uh, we're giving them some freedom, but still monitoring closely on what that looks like and what lessons we put into Canvas. And there are some classes, to be honest with you, that will continue to use a cellus, uh, junior high and high school classes. Some of them will be utilizing it. We're not going to be able to just do a flip of the finger and change pace. We'll slowly um, migrate away from the cellus as we can. But I can give you some examples of high schools with health occupations, with some of the CT classes that people are going to want to continue to utilize uh, a cellus as much as possible. Um, Let's move on now. Oh, how much autonomy will the teachers have in choosing that program? Again, uh, up to 25% can be used with a cell. 75% will be used with their current um, curriculum in the district. Uh, why in a time where businesses all across the spectrum are being flexible, flexible with their staff regarding the ability to work from home? Is the school district requiring staff to work in the buildings uh, without individual flexibility? So. The school district will be as flexible as we can possibly be, but uh, educators are essential workers and essential workers need to be at work. Uh, we need to be helping each other with the social emotional piece with our colleagues. We need to be getting prepared to serve 2200 students and their families. Uh, we need students to see the teachers uh, in their classrooms with bulletin boards, virtual tours of the classroom, virtual tours of hallways where lockers would be. And we need each other to build on each other's strengths and be better prepared uh, for the September 14th opening of our students. Around flexibility, I think our district will be the most flexible uh, in, in the entire world um, when it's an emergency situation. We'll take each individual case uh, into account and during emergency situations, uh, we will practice grace, patience, and flexibility. Uh, flexibility is, um, Around emergencies, flexibility, I don't believe, is an everyday occurrence or an everyday request. Um, so we need our staff to be present uh, as we begin this process uh, starting next Monday, and they need to be present uh, to complete the things that uh, we expect them to get done. Uh, another question here, if we still want to use a CELUS, can we use it? This is one that was just posted this evening. Since the school district has already paid for it, uh, will it be available to be utilized? We're gonna do everything we can to utilize uh, a cellist to the best of our ability since we've already purchased it and you're not gonna get money back once we make that investment. Um, I'm not exactly sure who asked that question. It might've been Sarah. Was that you, Sarah, that asked that question? So let's touch base individually and we'll see uh, how much um, we can allow you to utilize individually without uh, causing a burden on students to where they're trying to do too much curriculum at one time. We want to make sure that they're not overloaded, but as a supplement, it seems like that's something that could be used. Uh, at this point in time, we signed a contract with the CELUS that said we wouldn't release uh, curriculum to parents without um, them purchasing in some capacity. So we have to um, respect our contract with them as well and not break any contract because that's the way that they make money. But we will definitely work with you uh, to the best of our ability and see what we can do to help you out with that. Um, let's go to Rachel's question. Can you speak to the limited course availability at the high school uh, level? We have a student placed in a course and told there are no other options. So we had more options with a CELUS. Without a CELUS, we have less options. Um, there are some things that we can and can't teach virtually. We're maxed out with staff. Uh, we're doing our very best, but we weren't able to offer all of the courses at the high school level that we'd offered uh, in in-person learning. So we're doing our very best to do that. I can assure you that our staff is busy. Uh, none of them are sitting around. They all have a number of kids. And I would also say comparing our courses to what I'm looking at other secondary programs, 
we're offering quite a bit uh, as I visit with other superintendents. A lot of superintendents have chose uh, to back off on and go just to the Oregon uh, diploma, back off of electives uh, and get writing, math, and some science in there. I believe there's a number of electives that we would still want to get offered. But Rachel, you have a really good point that we need to keep kids uh, engaged. So we'll do everything we can. Uh, I would reach out to your counselors if you haven't done that uh, to make sure that you've exhausted every opportunity for your child to get into uh, some courses and availability there. There are also going to be some college courses that they could enroll in. So uh, don't forget that option as well. A lot of people took advantage of that last spring. I actually took advantage of it with my own son last spring. It worked out really well. They were free classes. I encourage you to do that as well. And we still have some other options that I believe we can sign you up on uh, to challenge your child with a Cellus um, that uh, may be an open study type of thing if you find something within a Cellus that you would like for them to be able to do. Uh, Theater is a course that will make some students uncomfortable. So you're gonna have a couple of weeks uh, to potentially drop classes or 10 days like we had in the past. Uh, we're just asking that these people be, um, these kids be enrolled in classes so that we get uh, ADM for them and they don't have uh, holes in their schedules. I'd like to open it up at this point in time to anybody that has questions that they would like to unmute and ask, and uh, we'll do our best to jump in and divvy them up. So let's spend a few minutes for open questions. Uh, Sarah, I think that's you. Your phone says Steph's iPad. So we're <laughs> Steph's iPad. Yeah, I had to borrow Steph's iPad because unfortunately our internet is out here, but luckily she has a hot spot to save me. So <laughs> um, my question is that the one of the reasons we decided to stay with the school district instead of homeschool was because of the SLS curriculum, because we researched it. We loved how it worked, how it met our kids where they're at right now because I, I know coming back that my kids are not going to be at the same place that other kids are going to be and I like the Stellis because it was going to work where they were at and it was going to challenge them it was going to keep them going and now with these teacher-led lessons I don't feel like it's going to meet my kids academically where they need to be right now and so that's why I was like hey, can we, can we use a Cellus like 75% of the time and teacher-led lessons 25% of the time? Because I feel like that is where my kids are going to get the value academically out of this. So, uh, Sarah, that's a really good point. So I'll address it first. I can let Katie talk about some curriculum. So originally we had decided it would be 75% a Cellus, 25% the autonomy of a teacher. Uh, since then, we have received more information from Oregon Department of Education. We have received more information from Northwest Region ESD with a curriculum uh, audit uh, of Acellus. And we have some requirements with the Oregon Department of Education. Uh, and they don't believe that Acellus will meet all of the requirements uh, ODE has standards for. And they're not sure that it's covering uh, each important piece uh, of the state curriculum and some examples of that were given to us. So I do tip my hat to you and I also agree with you in a number of aspects around Acellus. We've used it in our alt ed program. Uh, we've used it for credit recovery. We are currently using it uh, at Trask and a number of other uh, pl places are using it uh, statewide as well. It's one of the most common uh, curriculums used statewide. And, you know, unfortunately, I think they might have gotten a little bit of a bad rap and they might have earned some of it. I have to tell you that as well um, with some things that they weren't real inclusive about. I would still argue that um, there is a use for a Cellus. Uh, I do think that we will be better overall by starting out with it, uh, but using it as a, in a supplemental um, support system. But I, I hear your voice there and I understand where you are at with your family. Again, as we learn more about curriculum and we hear things from not only the Oregon Department of Education, but our instructors, uh, our uh, leaders in the district, I have to understand that 
there's no one right answer that's going to satisfy everybody. But to meet ODE requirements, a CELUS would not meet that standard. And we would have to go through an audit um, and have it approved. And it's not on the list of Oregon Department of Education approved curriculum. Uh, we did not know that at the time when we were doing our operational blueprints for comprehensive distance learning. And again, it's some things that's evolved and changed over time. And we're having to change with that as well. Probably not what you wanted to hear. Um, Katie, I don't know if you want to clean my mess up at all that I stated. You're welcome to do that. Um, but uh, if, I, if you think I got everything, so be it. Um, I guess a, a few things that I would add is one of the components with the CELIS, yes, it is adaptive, but it, it can only adapt so far. And it was set up to then flag teachers to then come in and, and make a, additional accommodations as necessary. So um, I do think our, our teachers are going to be better able to meet the needs of students. One of the other things that I would add is the district has made a significant um, commitment financially to purchasing additional tools for teachers. So we have purchased um, Eureka Math and Sync, which comes with videos that, you know, are created and PDFs of all of the worksheets. And so we're able to, to utilize the curriculum that we know that's been vetted, that is, you know, high quality stuff. Um, same thing for ELA, units of study, additional videos that have been created by professionals. So it's providing additional tools for teachers so that they can do um, you know, what, a, what a program can't, which is build relationships with students and um, make those individual changes as needed. Do we have other questions um, that would like to be asked? Okay, I believe in wait time. I want to make sure that uh, everybody has the opportunity. Um, also want to make sure that uh, our emails are in the chat for you to contact us if you don't have those. Uh, anything else from the group? Okay, with there being nothing else, we're a little over an hour, hour and 15 minutes. We suspect in the next couple of weeks, we'll do another town hall as well so that parents can ask questions and give us input so that I'm aware of parents' concerns. Uh, you don't have to wait a couple of weeks. You're welcome to get a hold of me now if you need to do that so that I can answer questions and the same with Katie Kara or Jennifer. Stay safe this evening, drive careful if you're driving. Um, hopefully everybody gets their power back on soon and we don't have any more fires and have a good evening.